Welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to move around some items in our product details area in our page. And also I'm just gonna to talk to you about how do I go through, what is the process that happens in my head if this was given to me as a, from a client. So if a client came to me and said, hey, this is actually a super expensive designer wallet. I don't want them to get sticker shock right when they land on my page. So I wanna move this price item down here. Can you help me do that? So I'm gonna walk you through just my thought process of how I do this. This might be a little bit of a longer video. If you just want the code, it's on my website. And also a note about the code on my website. If Squarespace changes some things, I might change the code on my website. I obviously can't come back and change this video. So the code on my website, that's the good code, not necessarily exactly what I'm writing here today. So with that said, let's jump in. So this is also an update to a tutorial that I also have on my page, on my website, um, but I don't have a video for it. So I thought I'd just make a video and update some of the code to boot, to boot. Um, okay, so this is what we want to do. We have this uh, $40 item and we want to move it down here. The first thing I would think is, does Squarespace give us a way to do this? So I would just jump into our product item here and hit edit product. Um, and really there just isn't a way. And you probably know this already. We have these items up here, which sort of just allows us to fill out this item, give it all the data that it needs, but it doesn't give us a really good way to lay out this area. We could do, let's do edit design, and I could hit this little button. And we have these different design layouts, but again, we can't change what this looks like, how this happens. This is just injected in from Squarespace. Squarespace controls all the code here. So I'm gonna go back to our half item right there. Um, so this means we have to jump into the code. We have to use CSS or JavaScript because we can't change the HTML here. Uh, I think I actually had it as simple, so I'm gonna go back to that. We'll talk about the other differences here uh, later in this video. I hope I remember to. Um, so here we go. So here is this exact same page right here, just opened in an incognito browser so I can look at the HTML. It's a lot easier to look at the HTML and the code behind the website if you're in an incognito window. Um, so here we are, let's just, ooh, there's my mega menu test popping up. Um, so one option we could use is JavaScript. I could target this item and then use the, um, the insert after method in jQuery to move it down here. And I'll just quickly show you what that looks like. If we go to our elements tab, we can find these elements right here. We have uh, our div HTML with the class of, oh, this isn't what we want. We want we want the price. Oh, right there. Our product item, product price. So we could target this element and then insert it after our, uh, what is it? Our product quantity input. So using jQuery, you could target the, I think, product item, product price. Is that what the HTML was? Let's take a look. Product item, product price. Yep. And then down here, product quantity input. Um, and we'll target that too. And so we want to insert after. So we're grabbing this element right here and we want to insert it after. And let's grab the other element as well, this product quantity input. And that'll move it right down there. And that is something that'll work. Um, this won't work for you uh, unless you put it between script tags in a code block and also have jQuery loaded. I'm not gonna go over that in this video. Um, but basically, I just want to show you, you can do this through JavaScript. However, that's not really the best way to do it. You don't really want to be using JavaScript to move things around if you can do it through CSS. And we can do this through CSS. We can reorder these items using CSS. Um, however, there are some limitations we have to work through uh, to make sure that works. So let's talk about that. What does that mean? So let me refresh this page. What are those limitations? Well, we have access to an order property, which is pretty, you know, it does what you would think it would do. So this is the order property. I'm over on MDM Docs. This is a great place to learn about new things where you can reorder items. So look at this pink item over here. If you just change the order property of it, it just moves around to whatever order that is. So order four, it is the fourth item down there. Order negative one, it'll be the first item. Order three, it'll be over here. Um, this only works though, if the parent container of this element 
is a flex or grid container. This won't work in our default block level layout. So let me show you what I mean. Let's grab our target element and let's just hover over, uh, let's just say our price. So let's just move up. Let's keep moving up the HTML until we hover over what might look like the container that holds all the elements. So right here, if I roll this up, you can see I roll it down and we have all of these guys as the child elements within it. Um, and you see it's display level block. So because it's block, we can't use this order property on the child elements here. We can't use the order because this has to be display flex for the order property it works or grid. We're just gonna stick with flex today though. Um, so that's what I would need to do. Let's change this back to block. So I'm gonna change this parent container to be a flex container, and then I can target each one of these elements individually within it, the direct children of the flex container, and add an order property to them. So that is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna target, I'm gonna target our class product item details checkout and give it a display flex, and then I'm going to add an order property to each one of these product item, our product item details excerpt, our product variants, each one of those. So I, instead of taking the time to type out all that code and wasting your precious time, because you are precious and so is your time, um, I've copied the code over here and I'm just gonna paste it in. I'm just gonna paste it in right here and we can talk about what this does. And you can see our, I, our price moved down there. So first I've targeted uh, the hashtag page. This These ID selectors are very powerful. They, this I, I put this in just so it overrides anything that, that Squarespace has in there right now. Uh, and then you notice we'll tar we're targeting our details checkout right there. And I've given it a display flex. So now this is a flex container, anything in there. And we can use these special flex properties for the child elements. And then we've also set a flex direction of column. The default is row, and this would look very bad. We don't want this, so this is why we want this to be column. And now, uh, because we're using uh, CSS less, all this is less CSS, um, talk about all this stuff in my course. Here's a little promo for my course. If you wanna learn more about CSS, take my course. Uh, product item details excerpt, this is our first one right here. We've given it an order of one, so this is the first item to pop up. Our product variance, order of two, quantity input three, price four, button five. So there we go, that is how we get this ordered on our desktop. I've also added in some code down here that targets our window when we uh, are smaller than 767 pixels, just kind of your, your standard uh, breakpoint for mobile devices. So I'm gonna hit this mobile preview and you can see we can add, I've just copied in this exact same code right here. Just, just this little bit that, that sets the orders. I've pasted it in down here and just moved some things around. So I wanted my button, my add to cart button to be a little higher up. I didn't want it to be after all these options. So I set that to an order of two um, and just changed the corresponding next elements, their order property. So that's how you do it. That is how this works. I also, if you are using, um, I will say this code right here, our product item details checkout, this is only targeting this layout. So edit design, that is only targeting our simple layout. If you want to use wrap or half, I have other code on my website, grab that code instead and you can play around um, with that. None of this code works for full because it's kind of just a different layout altogether. Um, so I don't have anything for full just yet. Um, but I hope this helps. I hope this sort of helps you understand a little bit more about how this all works. Uh, my thought process in going through, if this was given to me as a client, how I would tackle this project. Like I said, if you want to learn more about CSS, I have a whole entire course about Learn CSS specifically within Squarespace. Uh, check that out if you're interested. And now it's time for me to uh, just record a little bit so I can get some thumbnails for this video.